In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a crossword app in SwiftUI. On the left, you can see an example of this app. So if you press on the crossword boxes, you can insert text into them. So the first hint is a type of pet. So that's a cat. And a vehicle would be a car. And you can actually type in as many letters as you want, and it will actually just reduce it to the last letter you typed. Today, we're going to create this. So the first thing that you need to do is create your own crossword.swift file inside of your project. And then we're going to store two things inside of this file. Uh, we're going to store a view called crossword. And this is going to be our general crossword view. So give that a body computer property and just put a placeholder in, in it for now. Second, you're going to need a crossword block view. This is the more modular block that makes up the crossword view. And also just give that a placeholder for now, but we're going to change that very, very soon. So we want our crossword block to display some text, but we don't really know what that text is going to be and how it's going to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to leave that uh, to be externally decided and actually just make it so that we pass in a binding to a string when we create a crossword block. So we're not going to worry about all that right now. We're just going to say it's externally determined and uh, we're going to deal with it later. So we're going to give our text some styling. So I'm going to give it a font of title, a font weight of bold, some padding, a foreground color of white, a frame of width 60 and a height of 60, a background of the color red, and finally, a corner radius of 20. So let's go ahead and place one crossword block inside of our crossword view. We actually need to pass in a binding here. So I'm just going to create a simple text variable, uh, initially set to the character f, and pass that in as a binding so that we can see how it looks. So go back into your content view, replace the placeholder as a uh, crossword, and go ahead and run it and see how it looks so far. So now that we have a character, which is in a little red rounded rectangle, uh, that's basically what our crossword block is going to look like. We actually need to add one more thing to it, or two more things really. Uh, the first being the ability to choose a tip. So what I mean by a tip is that little number on the top left corner of the crossword block. And the way I'm going to implement that is have a local property called tip initially set to negative one. And the reason I want to do that is because if we decide to pass in a tip, then the tip is not going to be negative one. But if we don't decide to pass in a tip, then it's going to stay negative one. And that's going to allow us to display something different uh, depending on if the tip is negative one or not. So I'm actually going to replace our uh, text uh, text uh, view right here with a vstack as to contain our both our tip text and our character text. So I'm just going to replace that uh, character text right here. Font weight of bold. And I'm going to include a h stack here. And the reason is, uh, is because I want to push the tip all the way to the left of the block. So that's going to have a spacer on the right of the text, of the tip text. So the way we're going to display our tip text is that if the tip equals negative one, then we just show a space. But if it's not negative one, then we actually want to show a tip. So we're going to change tip or cast tip. Uh, into a string because it's an integer right now, right? And set its font to caption. So let's go ahead and see what happens if we don't have any tip right now. And as you can see, we have a problem, right? The, there's a little space on top of the character, um, character text, but we don't want that. So the solution is actually to add a position modifier that changes it, changes it to absolute positioning in order that we don't 
interfere with any of the uh, character text. So let's go ahead and run that again. And as you can see, uh, it's back to normal. And if we just add a tip up in our cross view here, you can see that it displays perfectly. There you go. And the final thing that we need to add to our crossword block is to uniquely identify each crossword block based on the index. So I'm going to add a, a indexed uh, local property as well as a binding to a selected index. The reason for both of these is first, we have a lot of crossword blocks and we want to make sure we know which one is which. So we're going to add an index to identify them. And second, we need the selected index to be passed in uh, because we want to change the selected index within the crossword block. And why, you might ask? That's because we want, whenever a crossword block is uh, tapped, we want to set, set the selected index to uh, the index of the block. And that's handled within the crossword block since index itself is a local property. So down here, we're going to add a on tap gesture. And uh, just uh, set the selected index to the index of the block. And I'm going to actually do this with animation just to make it look a little nicer. And also add a functionality so that if uh, the selected index equals the index of the block, then the background of that block should display a color of blue instead of red. And if it's not, then just display red. Okay, so that should be our final crossword block. All we need to do is to fulfill those parameters up here in our crossword view. So first we need to declare the index. And since it's the first crossword block we're making, I'm just going to declare that as a zero. Uh, but the selected index does need to be a state variable so that we can uh, pass it in as a binding. So I'm going to create one right here. Selected index initially set to zero. and pass that in as a binding. And the reason, um, uh, hold on, let's go ahead and run this first. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so the reason this is blue initially is because the selected index that we initially set here is zero and the index of the block is zero. So down here, as you can see, if the selected index equals the index, then it'll show blue. So that's exactly what we want, right? Uh, so now that we got all those tools working, uh, we want to create multiple crossword blocks inside our, of our crossword view. But the problem with that is that we have a individual text binding to our crossword block. If we create multiple crossword blocks, we're going to have to create one text variable for every single crossword block. And that's just not really efficient, not really good use of our time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an array instead, an array of strings that we can link custom bindings to and pass into the crossword blocks that way. So that might sound a little confusing, but I'm going to show you how to make it here, and it's going to uh, be much faster than manually creating the text variables. So the first thing I want to do actually is declare a convenience function called generate repeat string array. And it's going to take in an int uh, for size and a string that we want to repeat. And it's going to return our string array. And the reason I want to do this is because I actually want to initially set our block, uh, block's text to a space for every single crossword block that we create. Uh, but we can't really do this manually just by declaring an array. So this is a much better way to automate it. So this function is just going to basically going to be uh, starting with an, an empty string array. And uh, for the range of zero to size, we're going to append that string that we want to repeat. And at the end, just return that array. So now we can declare our array inside of our crossword uh, view. So it's going to be a state variable. And I'm just going to call it block text. And it's going to be equal to a call of generate repeat string array for a size of six. So I'm going to have six blocks, and uh, the string that we're going to repeat is going to be a space, like I said. Okay, so now uh, we can get rid of this uh, text variable, right?
But now we need to make custom bindings so that we can pass it into the crossword block itself. The way to do this is to actually create another function, uh, and we're going to call that uh, text bind. And it's basically going to make custom bindings that link to the block text array. So I'll show you how that's done. Uh, first, the parameter that we need is an index of what block we're talking about. So this is identifying the block. It's going to return a binding to a string. So here's our binding. Oops, OK. So our get function is just going to be a block text. Uh, and we're accessing the index that we passed in. And our set function is just going to be our block text uh, array accessing the index element and setting that to the parameter that's going to be passed in. So now that we have that, all we need to do is call text bind here and pass in our index. Uh, so our index of this block is actually just zero for now. All right. So it's actually become really long to write out a crossword block, um, to create a crossword block every time. You can see how long this line is. So we're actually going to create one more convenience function. And that's going to be uh, create block. It's basically going to reduce how much we have to write for each uh, block creation. So I'm, I'm going to show you how that's done here. So uh, let's do underscore index. Oops. Underscore index. Uh, that's going to be int. And the tip, uh, we want to make sure we're able to pass a tip in so that if we want a tip on a block, uh, then we can pass that in. But it's initially going to be set to negative 1 so that uh, if we don't want to pass a tip in, it still stays the same as uh, what we defined here in crossword block. OK, and basically all we need to do is return a crossword block uh, with the following parameters, right? The index that we specified, the tip that we specified, the selected index is going to actually bind to the selected index up here uh, that we defined. And uh, the text is going to be the text bind function uh, with the parameter uh, that we passed in, so the index that we passed in. And basically, that's going to really speed up our creation of blocks. So all we need to do now is say create block with some sort of index, for example, 0, and maybe a tip of 1. OK, so now it's really easy to create a block. Uh, we can actually create multiple blocks now. So let's go ahead and just create a crossword. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this and make sure it's working first before we attempt to do so. OK. So remember, nothing is displayed because our generate repeat string array function um, sets the initial characters to space. So don't worry if you don't see anything right now, uh, see anything as a character in the crossword block right now. But the structure of the crossword is basically going to be this. It's going to be a v stack. Uh, of crossword blocks, I'm going to have one row of three and two rows of one. So the first row of one will go on top. So create block of index of zero and create block index of, let's say, four down here. And in our h stack, right, it's just going to be our row of blocks. So create blocks one, two, three. And let's say that our first. Uh, block is going to have a tip of 1. And our second block down here is going to have a tip of 2. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. OK, great. So now that we have our basic crossword structure, uh, we can now move on to putting in user input into these crossword blocks. So how exactly can we do that? And it's actually a really complex uh, topic because we actually need to go into UIKit and grab some stuff from there. And the thing we're grabbing is actually the UIKit text field. And we're wrapping it in UI view representable in order to uh, bring it into Swift UI. And the reason for doing this is because uh, we actually don't have enough functionality with the Swift UI text field yet. Uh, and we actually need to pull stuff from UIKit. And I'm not going to explain this code here. Uh, if you would like to learn, I'll probably leave a link in the description on how to wrap UIKit views in SwiftUI. Uh, but basically, what this keyboard does is that 
It's a permanent keyboard. It always shows and it's invisible. And also in our little text field function down here in the coordinator, um, it's basically manipulating the string to just show the last letter. So if you don't want to do this, um, then go ahead and visit the GitHub link down below and just copy the code into a separate crossword keyboard.swift file so that you can use it. But going back to our crossword view, uh, to use this keyboard, all we need to do really is just wrap everything that we have in a Z stack first, and then put the crossword keyboard at the bottom of that uh, bottom of that Z stack. So the crossword keyboard actually requires one parameter, that is the text that is going to change or is going to bind to. And we want this keyboard to link to basically whichever block is currently selected. So we actually need to create a binding to our selected index or uh, the block that currently has the selected index. We actually can't use this text bind function here. And the reason is because text bind assumes that the uh, index won't change. It will stay constant. But the selected index updates all the time, right? When you tap on a block, the selected index will change. So we actually need to create a separate binding here called um, selected binding. Uh, a very self-explanatory name. And uh, it's going to return, uh, not return, this is just a computer property uh, of a binding to a string. And basically, it's going to have the same functionality of uh, the text bind function down there, except it's going to update every time selected index gets updated. So our get function is just going to access the selected index of the block text. And it's going to set the same thing, right? Set the same index in block text to the parameter that's going to, pass, that's going to be passed in. OK. So now all we need to do is pass in this computer property uh, into our crossword keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out and see if it works. So if we uh, click on any of these, we type some text, there we go. So now, now we can type text and I'll actually just reduce it to the last character. Once again, go ahead and visit that GitHub link down below if you I uh, don't know how to wrap UI kit stuff into Swift UI and just copy that uh, code over there and use it. Okay, so uh, we got all of that, but the last issue that we need to fix is that when we enter the crossword app initially, one of the blocks is already selected. And while that's okay, you might think that's okay, um, it isn't really that aesthetically pleasing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to hide the first block uh, the zero index block under another one. So uh, basically, I'm just going to replace this uh, create block here uh, with a Z stack and declare a new block right over the zero index one. So this is going to be a index of five. And this one doesn't need the tip anymore because it's going to be hidden. But basically, once we load into the app, this create block is going to be selected but it's not really gonna change anything because this one is the only one that's shown. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. So if I type, as you can see, nothing happens, but then once we select on one, then it starts changing. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, the only thing, uh, the only other thing that you need to add are the little hints down here that says like the first thing was like uh, a type of pet, second thing was a vehicle. So you can add uh, your own hints and your own tips, and basically customize the crossword to how you like it. Uh, obviously, this way of manually creating crosswords isn't very efficient. So an additional practice uh, to this project would be trying to use crossword generating algorithms to generate uh, crosswords uh, using this UI. And that would be good practice um, for making an app. So that's how you create a crossword app in SwiftUI.